Hello, this is Freeman from the Strax development team, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Strax point of sale system on Linux. So currently I'm running an Ubuntu desktop. However, whether you're on a Debian-based system or a RHEL-based system like CentOS or Red Hat, uh, I'll show you the correct commands to type. So first off, Strax POS is written in Python 3, so we need to ensure that Python 3 is installed on the system. The first thing to do, however, is to update the package manager. So if you're running a Debian system like Ubuntu, you can type sudo apt-get and update. If you're on a rel system, you can type sudo yum update. So once you run that, uh, your package manager will be updated and then we can install Python 3 and Python 3 pip. So in order to do that, uh, if you're on Debian, you're going to use apt-get. If you're on rel, you're going to use yum. So sudo apt-get install python3 and then python3-pip. Click enter. I already have these installed, but for you, it should go down and pull python3 and python3-pip. So now that we have python3 installed, um, let's refer back to the documentation on the GitHub to figure out how we need to install it. So it says the easiest way to install it is using pip. And for Linux, we're going to copy this command. So go ahead and copy that, and then paste it into your terminal. Now what this is saying is we're using pip3, which we just installed, to install the package called StraxPOS. And then we're going to pass in the install option to install the scripts and user local bin. So we're doing this because when you install Strax point of sale, it exposes an executable that you can run called StraxPOS. And in order to enable that, we need to pass it into a directory that's contained within the Linux path variable. Um, so that's just taking care of that. Now it'll go out and it'll install all of the dependencies for Strax POS. And after that's completed, you should have access to an executable called Strax POS. So if you type Strax POS, um, it'll boot up the server for the first time. Now the first time the server boots up, it needs some information from you concerning where it should send the funds that it receives. So you need to either supply a list of Strax addresses or you need to supply what's called an extended public key. So for the Strax addresses, if you click one, you can just enter uh, a list of Strax addresses one by one. And when you hit Q to say that you're done, it will create a configuration file and put those addresses in it and then start the server. Um, so, but before we do any of this, as a merchant, you're gonna need a wallet to store the funds that you receive. So my recommendation is to use the Strax Electrum wallet. So I have that already installed on Linux. Now, if you don't have it installed on Linux or another one of your computers, um, there's a video that we've created for Mac, Linux, and Windows on how to install the Electrum Wallet. So you can go check those out, install it, and then um, you can follow along with this video. So I'm going to start up the Electrum Wallet. And so this is the first time running it, so you're going to want to create a new wallet. And just go ahead and copy the seed. If you watch the install video, it will explain how to perform these steps. So I'm just going to copy this into here. And I'll just retype it. All right. And I'll enter a password. And now it'll start to generate my addresses. So if you want to get access to some of the addresses that you can use for this wallet, um, if you go to View and Show Addresses, you can go over to this tab. And you can just copy and paste these addresses into the terminal. Um, so you can paste as many as you want in. One thing to keep note of is, depending on how many addresses you put in, that's the amount of concurrent payments that you'll be able to accept. So if you put in five addresses, you'll only be able to accept payments from five people at one time. Once someone's finished, you can reuse that address, but um, you can only use the amount that's here. I'll, I'm going to explain to you in a second how the, elect, how the extended public key gets around that limitation. So you type a couple addresses. Let's say you type something wrong. It'll let you know. 
And then when you're done, you can hit Q to start the server and write these addresses to the config file. I'm going to exit out of the server and restart it because I want to show you how to do the extended public key as well. So the advantage of the extended public key is just from this one key that we're going to get from the Electrum wallet, you can generate any number of addresses that will correspond back to this wallet. So it allows you to be able to accept as many concurrent payments as, as you need because it could just can continually keep generating new addresses. Um, so if you want to use the extended public key, and I recommend it, you can go to your wallet and your Electrum wallet, go to wallet information, and you'll see this master public key. You're just going to copy that and you can paste it right into this line. So now that we pasted it in, we can hit enter. And what will happen is it, it's saying it's creating a Strack POS configuration file in the home directory under a directory called .stracks.pos. So, and it also started the server. And if you look, it's using the public key that we supplied. So let's, um, let's take a look at the folder that it just created. So we're in our, the home directory right now. And I'm going to show all the files, including the hidden ones. And you'll see that in here, there's a folder called .stracks.pos. So I'm going to go ahead and enter into there. And now you can see that there's a configuration file in this window. So before we get into accessing the server, let's take a look at the configuration file. Um, and I don't have Vim installed. Let's see if I have Vi installed. I do. Okay. So if we look at this configuration file, you can see if we go all the way to the bottom, you can see that the setup script um, put the extended public key that we provided at the bottom of the file. So that's how it knows what to use. Now there's a lot of other configurations in this file and I'll just go through them quickly. So if you look here, you can specify the different fiat currencies you want to support. You can select from this list right here. Scroll down a little bit, you can see that there's an option for tax rate. If you set this as a positive number, it will enable the, the tax rate in the system. If you set it as a negative number, it will allow you to apply a discount when you're in the system. Um, so port, this will specify what port the server runs on. The label, that you can apply a custom label to the point of sale. You can make it your business name or uh, what have you. The allowed IP addresses, these are the IP addresses that are allowed to access the server. So you can, right now it's defaulted to 0000, which means anyone can access. But you can, uh, you know, clamp this down to just your subnet or your local network or the computers that you trust. In here, you can specify the SMTP server options if you want to support email. And then if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, again, there's the section for the addresses. So in addition to just adding the public key, you can also add any number of address equals um, directives or you know options. And it will use those hard-coded addresses before it does any generation with the extended public key. All right, so that's the configuration file. And let's go back to the terminal that had the server running. So it said that it's running on port 8080. So we can access the server now by connecting to the IP address of this computer. Um, what we need to do first, though, is get the IP address. So I'm going to go back to my terminal, and I'm going to type the command ifconfig. And if you don't have ifconfig, you can try IP adder. And IP adder will show you a list of the IP addresses for the different network interfaces that you have. In my case, I'm using ENS33. And so I'm going to go down to the INET uh, section right here, and I'm going to copy this IP address. All right, so that's the IP address of this computer locally on the network that I'm on. So I'm going to go back to the Firefox browser, and then I'm just going to paste this in. And if you remember, it said it was being hosted on port 8080, so I'm going to do colon 8080 to specify the port. I'll hit Enter. And you can see the server got a connection, if we look. And it will load up the Strax POS. All right, I don't have um, a lot of RAM on this virtual machi machine, so that's why it's going a little slow. But if I click Get Started, we can see that we have the invoice. And you can use the system 
as it's meant to be used. Um, so this is sort of the basics on how to set up the Strax point of sale on Linux. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the comments or you can hit us up on Discord. My name's Freeman on there, or you can talk to any other of the team members and we'll be sure to be able to help you out. So thanks for watching and have a great day.